Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. So where we are today? We are here to visit my country. Exactly. Welcome to Mauritius. With a diverse and harmonious constitution of people and a unique location on the globe, Mauritius is one of the most culturally rich islands in the world. Indeed, this little paradise island is situated in the southeastern coast of Africa, next to Madagascar. Mauritius is a melting pot of cultures, religions, and people. And for those who are wondering why and how, then let me tell you a short history about Mauritius. It all started with the Arab sailors who were the first ones to set foot on the island around 975 CE and it was named as Dina Arobi. It was only in 1598 when a Dutch squadron landed in Grand Port that they named the island Mauritius in honor of Prince Maurice van Nassau, stadtholder of the Dutch Republic. They were then controlled by the French, who colonized them for nearly a century between 1715 and 1810. The island was taken over by the British and Mauritius served as a British colony until 1968, the year when Mauritius finally achieved independence. The European colonies then needed workers for the plantations. So, the African slaves first arrived and later on Indian workers and Chinese traders came to the island. Since half of the population are identified as Hindu, we have decided to show you one of the most sacred lakes on the island. But before embarking on our trip to the southwest of Mauritius, we couldn't resist a quick stop at this famous little place to buy some Mauritian Indian street food. This on my back is a perfect spot to have a break and taste one of the best local street food. Here I have samosa. I love this place because you can take a lot of stuff and are not that big. Very tasty and the fried is not that strong so it's so so good. So this one is a gâteau pomme de terre which means fried potato and inside you have the potato and it's uh, enrolled in a fried dough and on it you have a chutney and it's uh, crushed tomatoes with coriander. So guys, this is our first stop and we're actually at Grand Vasse or for the others, Ganga Talao. It's situated in the district of Savan and it's a crater lake, really, really beautiful. Should you find it difficult to navigate your way, look up for the statues of Lord Durgama and Lord Shiva, two of the biggest deity statues in the Southern Hemisphere. Entrance is absolutely free and the lake welcomes pilgrims and tourists from around the world for its dedication to Hindu culture. Have a look at the smaller shrines and colorful statues dedicated to overpopular Hindu gods. Ganesh, the elephant god, can easily be recognized with his elephant head. Mauritian even have a festival dedicated to Lord Ganesh called Ganesh. Chaturthi And now we are climbing to discover the highest temple in Grand Basse My new friend.
And now we are at uh, Palais de Barbizon in Chamorro. And as you can see, we are going to taste the typical Mauritian Creole food. I can't wait. Here we have the boar. It's a very, very balanced taste. Not that strong. The meat is soft. Approved. Now it's time to taste the fish. For sure there is tomato sauce, but I don't know the other ingredients. The tomato sauce in Creole, we say fugai. Bon appetit! <coughs> I love this. We actually had the Romery of Chamarel, which is really close to the restaurant we went. And now we're going to the factory and we will do some rum testing later on. Let's go! Wait, wait, wait. Someone talk about rum tasting? We had the extraction of the juice, the fermentation and the distillation. So for the first step, it's in two parts. We need to prepare the sugarcane before the extraction of the juice. The sugarcane we pass into two machines. The first machine is a cutter, it's here, which contains 14 rotative knives. And the second machine is a hammerer, which contains 24 hammers. After the hammerer, the sugarcane we pass through our three mills. And here each mill contains six rollers. After the extraction of the juice, the sugarcane we pass through our rotative filter, which will separate the fibers from the sugarcane juice. So here the fibers, we call it bagasse. So we will burn it to boil water and then to heat the distillation. So after we separate the fibers, the juice will go to underground pipe, leading it to the fermentation. And then the fermentation will take only two days to ferment because we add yeast in it, that's why. So here we have the single distillation. It's a column which measured seven meters high, which is filled and which contains 24 superimposed strips. So here we inject the steam and we will inject the sugarcane wine up. The sugarcane wine will go down tray to tray. It will get in contact here with the steam. It will create an alcohol vapor. The alcohol vapor will go up tray to tray and condense into droplet of rum. So for the first heater, we obtain a rum at 90%. We will divide it in three parts, the head, the heart, and the tails. So <laughs> as I told you, we use only the middle, which is the heart, and which is 70%. And then we do the same process. We add water in it to reduce the percentage to 42% for the single steam rum. It's like the same process. It's just for the single installation, you obtain the rum more quickly. Horse shot. Yeah. And we finish with coffee. Room coffee. Guys, I think we're getting drunk right now. He's empty. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is our last destination for the day. And we are actually at the seven colored earth. This is a spectacular landform and you definitely need to come visit here when you come to Mauritius. Over time, Mauritius' hot and humid climate eroded the area's basaltic rock, leaving behind a chemically weathered porous rock known as saprolite at the surface. This erosion created this picturesque landform, with its many colors and sharply defined ridges. Our time for today is over, but not for the Mauritian exploration, because see you tomorrow!